Okay. Uh, we st okay, so let's start this. Um, once again, they seem to get more difficult as we go along. I find this one fairly, relatively easy because it's there are a lot of there are a few mainly bar, uh, Taiji movements, but there's also a few Bagua movements in there as well. Some of the difficult Bagua movements. So we'll start with this one, with again with oh by the way it works upon the heart. This whole meridi this whole chi disruptive kata works upon the heart. So we've done spleen, spleen, kidneys, kidneys, lungs, and now heart. So which indicates to me that the spleen, the spleen, and the kidneys are really very important, obviously, in uh, Chinese medicine, because we've only got one for the lungs and one for the heart. So, left foot forward. I'll start facing this way. Now, the first movement starts with the exact move that we do in Pai Ji, the close up, close up, close up. It's closing up, it's called, close up movement. Now, in Tai Ji, when you get to this move here, it's called close out, close up, or closing up, because at this point, where you short out the heart and the lung meridians here like this, you're shorting out, you're, 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 you're getting the chi ready for next action, and it's being, sto it's being here in the Dante, and it's ready, the circulating chi that you've got by doing the form is, is ready for action here, so it's closed up in this position, ready, and as soon as you break your hands apart, ah, then, ah, then it starts flowing again, because it's already done one complete revolution, around your body up to this point and now ah, now it starts moving again or activating again rather not moving activating again I should say activating so when you get to this point here it's basically stopped activating and just the normal body where it should be in your body activation at any time of the day is just activating normally but as soon as you, as soon as you start again then it starts activating throughout the whole body again so you start with the left foot forward again the same old thing that we're doing before with the scapulae Two, two each. So this, if I exaggerate, I've done this before, but it's best just to do this, not to try and do it by looking at me. It's best just to let this happen. That's how I got it. I, I, would, I would see this happening. I think, oh, geez, what am I doing? <coughs> like this. And it's difficult to get it if you try and do it. But what's happening is, as this hand's coming forward, this one's coming back. So the scapula of the left hand is in. And the right one, see, is out. And then the reverse happens. See? So you just do two evolutions. One, uh, one, two, and then you come back. So you're in a position where your right hand is slight because of the f position of your feet. Your right hand will be equal to your left hand. But in effect, it's actually more forward because of the, it's like when, when you start a race, you know, people here, they're more, more forward than these people because these people have got shorter distance to run and it's the same when your hands. So your hands actually end up like that. So first move is you take a step with your left foot. The foot is simply one of these ones again where you step in like this. This hand comes up. So that's a sort of a cross hand straight away but that's not the main cross hands. So first of all it goes ah, uh, ah. Uh, like as if it's doing that move in the form but not so big. Uh, uh. I'll just continue this. Now the hands open like you're doing it in the form. They turn out. You put your foot behind the other one, exactly the same as the leaping carter. And now you cross your hands right over left and let your left foot straighten up. So that foot should be like that. You're in a back sitting stance. See, so I'm like this, but with my back to the, to the north now. Let's just get that one right for starters. So left foot forward, you've done that. Uh, uh, uh. The weight's down on your right leg. It's quite a nice flowing movement when you get it. We haven't done a far, it's not a far jing movement, it's just ah. You're looking out the corner of your eye, trying to look over your left shoulder. Now I'll do it this way so you can see what happens around that side. And the weight's down on your right leg. See the head's with your body, but the eyes are looking out the corner. Trying, I can see my right shoulder here, my left shoulder rather. That's what you're trying to look for. 
So again, I'll do it this way this time. Now on top of that, we've got a far jing movement now. So I'll do it again, uh, facing the correct direction. So it's very simply, when you get around, I'll do it this way. Right, left, right. So when you get to here, you get ah. Uh, In other words, that elbow is going out. See, it's much the same as when we did this leaping wah, that one, but it's more on a flat plane. So from here, the elbow just comes up a little bit, bang and back. So you first of all turn to the right slightly. You'll see why in a minute. And then. <coughs> And the hands are totally loose. That's very important to have your hands very loose, as in 